Right guys, Mark Crossfield here with good old fashioned compare. Again, we're gonna do the JPX 921 Tor. So from Mizuno against the MP 20s. Now these two clubs are definitely two clubs that people would think about buying, you know, kind of similar bracket. One offering possibly a little bit more help than the other. Let's see what the difference is. Is there any difference? Are we buying just into cosmetics and looks and our feelings of what we want a club to do? Got numbers, gonna talk tech. Looking forward to this one. I always like a good Mizuno test. Right, let's kick off with the Tor JPX. We've got a green out there at 170, both seven irons, both same shaft. This is a beautiful looking iron. Like, I get why this is popular. It looks so good with that slight kind of almost brush finish as well. Slight push, but that's getting to the 170 for me, which is good for a seven iron. That pushes me to my limits, basically. I love the sharp, clean edge on the top, the shape, the length of the head is all just spot on. And the sounds where you'd expect. I, I'm looking forward to seeing if this and the blade actually has a different sound. That feels solid, feels Mizuno nice. That slight toe, but it's gonna do fine. I think you can see it just dropping maybe a fraction less, but not much in it, it's the closest shot. Has to be one of the best looking irons on the market today, I think, JPX, uh, the Tor. Again, that's a little bit out of the bottom of the club. Very good face control, you can see it leaking short right. Still making distance, obviously you're not meant to get as much help and so on with these, but I think that's so hard to measure. I mean, that was a pretty poor strike and it's doing all right, apart from the direction, which my face control wasn't quite there. We started one a little better. Again, that's slightly bottomy, but a lot of the ball was caught. That's a decent shot. Getting nice carries, I can see on the monitor in front of me. Little Healy cut working. Again, see it dropping that a bit short. It was bottom heel. But I'm certainly hitting all over the face. Um, it doesn't feel too crazy. And you can see the grouping is nice. Proper strike. Better for direction now. Look, and that's not really going any short for carry, was it? I struck that better. Nothing short of feeling spectacular. Feeling, I mean, it's a Mizuno, you know? It's gonna feel solid, it's gonna feel good, it's gonna feel reliable. Let's have a look at the tech of these two clubs. Like, what's going on with them? Is there a defining difference? So when we look at the tech, let's start with the 921 JPX. This is forged, so it's a forged uh, in Japan iron. Exactly the same as the MP20, actually. They're both forged in Japan. In the JPX, we get the stability frame, so weighting out towards the toe, trying to help with CG placements, plus also giving you that little bit more user-friendly, so kind of keep the ball speeds up across different parts of the face, not just that sweet spot. The JPX also has the harmonic impact, so basically they're saying you hear impact for a fraction longer, which gives it that more kind of solid, nicer, pure kind of oily feeling you get in a Mizuno iron. And we also get soft feels, a little bit more weight, I think, packed behind the impact area as well in JPX, just to try and keep it that little bit more solid feeling. And again, they're just trying to edge that kind of more game improvement help, but from what looks like very thin top lines, very classic looks, similar to good, really good turf interaction that you find on the MP range as well. So they're really, really close, these clubs in their tech. I mean, if we look at the MP20's tech, Again, that's Grain Flow Forged. It's forged from 1025E Pure Select Mild Carbon Steel. It's also layered with soft copper platinum to benefit the nickel chrome from legendary feel and feedback is what the website says. So again, it's like everything is about supreme feel in MP20. It's got a Tor Ready profile, which it does. It looks like classic Mizuno Tor when you look down at it. And it's more vertical stable than prior models, they're saying. So they spread weight to make the uh, stability of this club from top to bottom or bottom to top that little bit more stable. And you've also got a very refined top edge look. Classic, classic blade. Yep, that's beautiful. 
Now, to be fair, apart from the brushed finish, I'm not seeing a massive difference down by the ball. Anything that I would stand out. They're looking very, very similar. Oh, I've pulled it. <laughs> Did actually draw that one. But you can see it falling into the line of shots. Oh, I'm struggling to see, like there, you see the difference there. But then you put them into gaming position. Oh, it's not, absolutely not much in that. Be interesting if the numbers change, but it's like the chroming to the brush finish is different. So again, that's an equivalent fin strike that I got out of the other ones, and that is dropping. That's noticeably shorter, isn't it, there? We're dotted up so we can look at the strikes, but I would argue that's probably the worst strike of all of them in its defense. Or is it the blade doing that? Again, a little bit toey pull. Uh, not much of a comparison if I don't make a comparing swing at the moment. So that felt duller. It was a duller strike, but it felt duller on the face to me then. So it's those kind of ideas when you use a blade that will play in your mind. So even if that's measurable or not, you hit a few bad ones, you will second guess yourself if you've got the right help down there. Proper shot, there you go, we're in. We're in business. And that's falling joint longest and decent close shot. It's interesting that when I perform, uh, it's not me, is it? So I'd say I'm putting myself off more with my ability to strike and control than I'm feeling a huge difference with these two clubs. I'm just feeling such similarities. A little bit up the left, it's gonna catch the green. Again, look, this is going almost that bit further. Right, last shot. We'll dial into these numbers. I wouldn't be able to pick. If anything, it's the JPX just slightly on the brush look. We'll see if there's anything in the numbers that shouts at us. Again, a little bit of a wrong loft delivery there, but you can see the other flights are out there catching the right side. Let's have a look at these. Ball speeds, one mile an hour. Launch angle, one degree more with MP. Uh, we'll look at dynamic loft in a minute. Slightly less sp uh, spin with MP. And then carry exactly the same, resulting distance is exactly the same. You can see the dispersion very similar, a little bit more dispersed with the MP, but you can see I definitely hit them worse as a set of shots. Head speed, less than one mile an hour difference. Dynamic loft. Very much the same, lie within half a degree of each other. All the other numbers again, a little bit more out to in with the MP, a little bit cuttier swing, but not much in it. And then you see the strikes, fraction averaging lower with, but almost on top of each other to be fair. You know, I mean, you could hit more balls. I think you're gonna find that these two clubs really are performing very, very similar. You're gonna be really dialing into the fact that you're scared of a blade or not more than anything else. But you can see there, I mean, phew, not feeling much of a difference between those two. Right, little push myself to my limits challenge because obviously when you've got an iron like this, if you're pushing yourself to the limits, that's when you might get a few more missits and you're gonna want inferior to help maybe more than what the blade offers. Well, let's see. 17th, St. Andrews, second shot, 175 into the flag, straight over the road, old bunker. I have to hit my best seven iron to get this on the fl onto the green and carry that bunker. Uh, five of each in the comments down below, which one's gonna hit the green more often? What do you reckon? Will I find any more help out of the JPX or am I up for the blade? So the beautiful MP20 to kick us off. Five shots. How many can I get on the green? This is right on my knuckle. That's a little bit of a toe, but it might be low spinning. No, nope, that's short of the bunker and in. Ouch. Try harder. <laughs> More of the ball, might need more speed, but that should get over. Oh, in. Oh, yes, please. Cheeky little bounce, but. 
So I hit that pretty good, like not as good as I could. So I think it's gonna have to be fast for me and struck perfect to land that green. But this is where this kind of club is really asking you to do everything. And have I got anything? There you go, that's better. I felt like I went fast there, yeah, 91, but I caught it slightly out the bottom. Go! That's what I love about this test. That's what I would try and get you to do if you were getting fit. Don't just hit your normal shots. You want to play an array of different shots. I'll play this shot on the course. I'll have to hit a hard seven in situation. And I want to know if the club I'm getting allows me to do that or not. Right, one more. Three on one in the road bunker at the moment, which is pretty good considering this is a bladed club. Again, that felt like I had the speed. Yeah, 91.7. That's my fastest and a decent struck. Pitching nearly the green. So I can't, like, it's right on my limit. But if we look at dispersion top right, like, you know, one bad shot and I'm, you know, it'd be risky for me to do it this way. An easier option would be like a cut up six is always getting over there. It's more I want to test these. Like, I'm impressed with that. All right, new head, same shaft. These will now be red dots. Blue dots are the bladed. Is there gonna be a difference or are they too close to call? Bit toey. 89.8, it's my wildest. That wouldn't have made it. It's got the speed, 90 miles an hour, but the face was too lofted and right. Done well though. It's probably landing in the same spot if you think about it on the angle I'm coming in at. So I didn't get my face angle right there. It was 30 degrees of dynamic loft delivered, delivered there. Well, I want it more down in the 27s, 28s, 29s to get there. So that's got my speed, 90 mile an hour, 0.6, slightly out the bottom. How's that one gonna do? Pretty good. That's into the pack. All right, two more. If I was buying, it would be so much on the looks. And I would probably buy into the little bit more help. But knowing if I would ever see that or not coming out in shots, it's going to be so slim. You can see how close these are constantly. Meteor strike. I don't think I've got the right shape. No, I haven't. I've pulled, drawn it. But that would have got decent carry, 90 mile an hour. I think this is a really interesting point. Look at the two tests, it's flipping. The performance, my performance is flipping, isn't it? It was more wild with the blade, now it's more wild with the JPX. When you get products so close, like it's so much of golf product, I wonder how much is sold purely on, you know, one nice data set that kind of does it. And the flip side to that idea is look how close these two are, so it wouldn't bother me either. Um, it's more when people are categorically saying something is better than the other, I think, is where we get a little unstuck. Right, one more. Full speed, carry this to the back of the green, can I? So that should be, that's 92.5, so it's my fastest. And it's carried fine. I did present 31 degrees aloft. If I got that down at 27, that would have got back there. I want that speed. I'm gonna hit one more. I know I'm out of shots. One more. I want that speed with a proper loft. 92, 28, slight toe. Yeah, but carrying almost the furthest and landing and stopping. Close. Two very solid feeling irons. Super, super close. I think I would go JPX, but there's a part of me that thinks I would go JPX just because I've gamed the bladed Mizuno irons before. Sometimes it comes down to as little as that because you can see from the numbers, like they're super, super, super close. If you are gonna dial into the marketing speak, like I'm not saying that you might not get a few, the odd mile an hour ball speed extra from JPX over the blade over the period of a year. It's just seeing that come through, I think you could really rely much more on your looks and feels, those kind of things. Really, at the end of the day, they're just two really solid, good-looking golf clubs. Down there in the comments section, which ones would you go for?